We got another Fidget Seed video! Welcome everybody back to my VGC series on the channel. This one is, is going to be one of the shortest ones because it's literally just two matches that you're going to be seeing. And these matches come from a tryout that I participated in back in September. They were trying to build a team for what they call the World Cup. And I, because I'm new, I was just trying to join whatever I could. So I was like, hey, why not? Like, let's try it out. Right, let's try out for the Puerto Rico team. Now the way this tryout worked is that they created a team based on volunteers for Puerto Rico and what ended up happening is we were matched up against El Salvador which is another team that participated in the World Cup and each player from each team was going to face off against another player from the office. Because this is the first time that I participated in anything like this, obviously I had a lot of questions. They, the, the group was very helpful in like guiding me through certain things. Uh, the team that I used, I'm going to show off on screen right now. And the thing about this team is that technically speaking I created it by myself. Uh, we were in a, in a group call and the, the, the people were talking amongst each other, trying to help each other out. I was just listening because the fact that I'm, st I'm new to this group that exists over here, I'm still trying to find myself in terms of like what kind of teams I like to use. I like to create teams, you know, personally, you know, with my ideas and then I ask for help but from, you know, the past couple of VGC videos you've seen is things that I've worked with with my friends, you know, like Zen choir boy and stuff like that so I'm still not truly integrating myself into the ethos of the Puerto Rico team and stuff like that but I'm hoping that with, with time um, and as me you know talking to more to these people then hopefully that I will be able to build a rapport and then I can start sharing my ideas with them as well um, but I still want to have my own community so once again I want to plug the discord in the description you guys can you know join the discord and then if you are a fan of VGC, we have a VGC chat that's strictly for VGC people. There's a role that you can assign to yourself uh, using the commands. And then we can just talk and chat and all that stuff in there. Uh, and you can also just talk in the other chat. Mm -hmm, no big deal. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the battles because they were on showdown. Which is a good thing about this tryout, right? Because if we have the replays and we're able to study them for future like improvements and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy the game. I obviously will be here with you guys talking through them. And we'll go from there. All right, everybody. So this is game one of our best of three set. Now, to give you some backstory and the reason why I have this team, when I did research on this person, I saw that they were a big fan of like card trick room or trick room based teams. So my initial plan was like, oh, well, I can just have like a, a very hyper aggressive team to overwhelm this person to the point where they can't set up trick room or nothing like that, right? But I figured I'm not comfortable with hyper offense. I never have been. I'm more of a bulky offensive player as I've mentioned plenty of times before. So I said, okay, if they have trick room, I can do a counter trick room team, which is what this is. I have relevant to get rid of any of the psychic drains. I have a bridge wrap with the imprisoned, right? As I showed you guys in the basement earlier. I'm basically either stopping trick room from coming up or making sure that they can't actually hit me with as much offense as possible, which is why most of my mods are really bulky. Now, I wasn't gonna go with the Imprison Trick Room strategy for the first game. I figured I would leave that for a second or a third game if I needed it, right? I feel like because of the, the threat is there, I felt like it's too obvious to start off with that, so I didn't want to play into that. So what I ended up doing is lead off the Primarina, the Cinderor at the beginning of the battle, and they're gonna lead off with Indidi and Glade, if I remember correctly. Yes. Now, Psychic Terrain is up, right? which means I can't go for Fake Out. However, remember what I said, I'm trying to either stop Trick Room from going up, or try to do as much damage to where the Trick Room is not gonna be as effective, right? So what I end up doing for this first turn is, I, I go for the Moon Blast on the Glade to try to do as much damage as possible, and then Parking Shot out the Indeedee. Now, the reason why I went for the Indeedee play is because the Glade has clear amulet, which means I can't lower its offenses, which means, you know, Parting Shot would fail. But by bringing in Rillaboom in this way, I have Fake Out available for the next turn, and because they have Indeedee on the field, they can't, you know, get rid of it. 
So, this is perfect for the next room, right? For the next turn. They go for the trick room, right? Now I have, like I said, fake out is available. I'm trying to stop the closet right here. So, so I need to stop the glade from going for white guard. Now, this is again might be my inexperience. I don't know if fake out goes before white guard. It went before follow me, so that's why I gotta make the assumption that maybe I would stop the white guard from going in. Um, because I'm trying to do a, a burst damage here, right? I'm trying to hit either the Galate staying in or whatever else comes in. So I go for the hybrid boys and basically almost kill this Ursaluna. <laughs> I almost kill Ursaluna. So that's a positive for me because now their biggest hitter is severely weakened. Uh, I have a Glade, which that was 20%. So two of their mons are highly damaged. One of them can't do anything because it's a support mod with the DD, right? And I still have all four of my mods healthy. Now, this is another thing that I didn't I didn't know. You're gonna notice it here that I, I play a little strangely, okay? I I don't know how follow me works in terms of priority. I figured that since fake out came first, right? Then I would have I've assumed that Grass and Glide does the same thing. So I'm trying to kill the Ursa Luna with Grass and Glide, right? But the follow me goes first. So you're gonna see the trick plays here. I go for the grass and I trying to destroy this Ursula and I go for the protection and trying to get them um, burn damage essentially on the on the Ursula Luna. Um, so I go like I said, I go for the, the grass and light, the follow me to redirect it, which means I can't hit this Ursula Luna. Um, I'm not leaving Primarina in, okay? Primarina is very crucial to my team right now. So what do I do? Is the next turn I switch into my Incineroar to get an attack drop on the Ursaluna. And then again, I try to go for the Grass of Light, maybe predict the follow me, not gonna happen, whatever. Um, I'm doing a lot of damage though. But aside from a lot of damage, I recover with the okay. this, this is the crucial part. This is what I'm talking about. So now, they're, I have basically wasted their Trick Room turns. They haven't been able to do anything because my Incineroar is back at. Uh, a reasonable HP. I'm gonna get more from Grassy Terrain right now. I have Fake Out active again, right? And then their Ursa Luna is basically gone. If the Indeedee does does follow me again here, I, I it's dead because I'm gonna I'm gonna fake it out, right? I'm gonna go for Fake Out. Um, the the point is, I have pinned them to the point where I'm wasting their Trick Room terms. They can't do as much damage to me. I have my Primarina nice and healthy. In the back of the team, right? Rillaboom is still at max HP, right? So I'm I'm feeling confident here. I'm feeling very confident. So I'm gonna go for the fake on the Indeed because I'm trying to stop the follow me from happening, and then hitting the Ursaluna with Grassy Glide, which is what I'm trying to I'm trying to kill this Ursaluna. Basically, that's that's the whole point of what I'm trying to say right now. So switch into Armorude. I go for the fake out. It's whatever. And I go for the Grassy Glide. Ursaluna is gone. Now, now we lost. One of their hard hitters. Yes, Armourouge is still here, right? I understand that. Which is another offensive uh, threat on their team, right? I still have a full HP Rillaboom. Primarina's in the back, nice and healthy. Incineroar is now back at almost 70%, and Trick Room is about to expire, right? So I've essentially played off their Trick Room so they can't do anything anymore, right? Which is good. I did good. I feel like I'm proud of how I played that out. Now, they do get a Psychic Train back, which is bad, but if I can save my Rillaboom, I think I'll be fine, right? So, I do that. I'm well, indeed coming in, because they have to bring it in, and I'm gonna go into Primarina, because I can deal with anything. They go for the, the Terra Grass, I go for the knockoff. I basically said, if I can neuter the damage as much as possible, then I think I'll be fine. I don't mind killing the Indeedy, because like I said, it puts me back up, and I, I am confident enough that the armor is not going to do anything to what I have on the field right now. Yes, expanding force is a hard hitting move, but Incineroar is immune and my Queen Marina is bulky enough to where I don't have too much of a worry for it. So, they do go for the trick room again. I, listen, I want to say this, okay? I think this was a mistake on their part because their armor is faster than everything else except for my Rillaboom and Volcarona. I specifically made my mods slow on purpose. So right now, my Pokemon are the fastest things in the Trick Room. 
which I, I don't know if they, they didn't realize this, um, or they could have just checked because 72, uh, 58, you can like, that's ain't math in here, right? So, uh, I, I go and kill the, the delay. Okay, the only reason why I did that is I figured the biggest threat right now for for my Incineroar is the Glade. If I can get rid of it, I'm fine. I'm dandy, right? I'm not scared of the armor. So they, they have a Psychic and a Fire type move, which Incineroar handles like nobody's business. So uh, they are going to go, or I'm going to go for the Moon Blast, which is going to do a, do a ton of damage. And like I said, my Pyramid Arena lives that easily and forfeit. So I don't know if they just didn't realize or they didn't make their armor slow, which e like I said, either way, 72 was their, their, their least speed, whereas I have 58 on both. Now, I believe my Incineroar, I made my Incineroar like two points slower than my Primarina for this exact point. Not specifically for this particular pairing, but I wanted to make sure that I would get knockoffs on my opponents for my heavy hitters to do more damage in the long run, right? So that was game one. I felt like I did a good job. I handled their first trick room without incident, okay? I was able to drag it out to the point where the, the their biggest heart hitter, which is the Ursaluna, didn't get to do a single thing, right? Which I thought was good. I'm very proud of myself for doing it that way, right? And then I, so I was able to waste their trick room. They weren't able to do as much damage to me. All my Pokemon were healthy um, to the point where when they tried to set up a second trick room, my Pokemon that were out are slower than what they have out on the field, and I was able to do a massive amount of damage, and there was no way for them to win. Right, so that's game one, and now we're gonna head to game two. All right, now this is game two, our best of three, and let me just say, I, for this one, went completely different. I said, I'm not gonna let you do anything. I'm gonna set up, and I'm gonna win, right? <laughs> which is which is crazy, right? I, I, I normally don't play like this, but I figured the way that we're playing in the first game, I could play it a little bit different. Now, again, I said in the first uh, the first battle that I didn't want to use the Imprison Trick Room because I didn't feel it was necessary, right? I want to I wanna see if I can win without that strategy. So this game two is me not using that strategy to see if I have to get, take it to a game three and then I can use it or whether it was necessary. I think the threat should always be there just in case. But I went a little wild for you all here, okay? So what I ended up doing was, <laughs> I led Incineroar and Volcarona. <laughs> and I said, you know what? You're trying to play this slow game. I'm trying to play this fast game here. So as soon as the turn starts, I switch into my... The only reason why I did this is because I knew for a fact that they weren't going to do anything in terms of like Trick Room or stuff like that with Glade in this one turn. Incineroar did a lot in the last battle. So I figured my best chance is to deal with this thing right now. So, I switched into Rulum. Now, I'm going to take a lot of damage here, okay? But, by having them focus on the left side, I forgot that I have a Quiver Dancing Volcarona on the right side, right? So, they're going to do a lot because my Rillaboom, the way I have it trained, is not necessarily defensive. It has more special bulk because it's an Assault Fest and Rillaboom, right? But, I figured that I can still tank a hit, right? I probably should have had more defense on it, I will admit. But I wanted to have at least a little bit of offense with this thing. So I, I took a hit there. Now, I did make a, a weird play here. Right? What ended up happening is I switch the armor. I go for the fake out on the blade, just try to get some damage. And then I go for the heat wave. Now, what I should have done in hindsight, I, okay, I, in hindsight, I should have gone for another quiver dance here because I'm not threatened by anything. At, I'm sure, okay, the way it has. A sword, so I can cut, I'm gonna fake out the side anyway. So I'm not scared of Indeedy and whatever switches in, I think I should be fine. So there was no reason for me to not go no, roll for another perfect dance, especially since I can just switch out next turn, right? There's there's no reason for me to, to, to do what I did here. So what ends up happening here, they could have switched to Indeedy here, mess me up because if Psychic Terrain is out, then you know, Willaboom's uh, Grassy Goliath doesn't get priority. I, I, didn't, I was the, contemplating that. But at this point, I said, I'm going off the wall here, and we're not giving fucks. So, I go for the Grass Glide, kill the Glade, and then they're going to go for the Expanded Force. Now, because type Second Train is not, is not a double target hit, it's a single target move, right? And I'm already at plus one Special Defense. 
So I figured, okay, you got these special attackers out here. Let me let me set up another creeper dance and go go for the damage. Uh, okay, this was this might have been a mistake. Okay, I'm sorry. I probably should have done that. Now what I should have done here. Okay, now this is probably my only regret for this battle. I should have turned my reload here because I wasn't gonna tear grass my opponent in this match because she was like no threat of the Earth Moon anymore, and they just died. Um, I'm not gonna tear Incineroar because again, it's a grass type, so that's not good. And my Queen Marina, I guess I could have tear Dragon, I guess. But I honestly feel like I should have gone for the Tear Fire here and then just get some some work here. I could have knocked off one of these. Um, but we are gonna go for the Tear Fire. Um, corruption here as I switch to Marina, I guess, as I go for the protect, and he does a shit ton of damage, okay, he's hit by protect, which is a lot, hit by premium, and obviously they're gonna go for the armor cannon, which isn't gonna do anything, um, because I protect it, but yeah. Now, in hindsight, I'm like trying to remember, I, I might have lived to double up, I'm not sure, I didn't calc this, right, but considering I'm at plus two, I might have lived. I don't know. They are flash fire boosted. They're also terra fire in the sun. So there is a possibility that I would have died here. Um, but we ain't talking about that. So I do. This was another. I got I got build out here. Okay, I will. Admit. I got a little build out here because I get a double protect, which I wasn't. I, I didn't expect to die because, like I said, I now I have more HP, so I felt a little bit more confident that I could have lived, right? But I don't know why <laughs> I I went for the double here when I could just set up another cooler dance. I get a double, luckily, right? And I go for the hyper voice, which does a decent amount, but we're in the sun, so obviously it's not going to do as much. And then Primarina dies. Um, now, we're back, right? We're back in more trick room. So I have successfully um, dealt with the trick room here, and I got to the room, right? And I, I was not predicting the Indeedee to switch out here at all. I honestly expected him to go for the for the follow me, which would have been really bad for me. But my real room is the only thing on my team, and, and my vocal room, obviously, that are faster than this armor reach. So. I set up a forward dance, you know, just to keep her, her special defensive and I go for the knockoff and I'll move to it. Okay. So now all they have left is Ndidi and Torkoal, which is not going to do much in this scenario. I'm just switching to my Incineroar, um, because I'm trying to, like I said, I could have just at any point teared my Rillaboom. I don't know why I did it. Okay. That's, that's me yelling at Pat Sorison for such an obvious thing that you could have done. Okay, you could have just teared your Rillaboom and none of this needed to happen. Okay, I'm just saying. Um, I go for the Hewitt. I miss the Torco, but I killed the Indeedee. Um, and then the Eruption isn't going to do that much. So one of my moms, and I get the Torco because they, they they are not able. Because I can go for the Fake Out here and the Heat Wave, which is going to do a decent amount because Torco is special defense is ass, and we're still in the sun, right? And on top of that, I'm faster with everything else I have on the team, so. What I could do is just fake out and then he wave and then party shot and he wave and at, at the end of the day, this was a, a, a victory for moi, right? And I felt very confident in myself, right? I, I was feeling very hyped when I finished this battle because I said, you know what? I, I thought of a game plan and I followed through and it actually paid off, right? Were there things I could have done better? Hell yeah! <laughs> Like I said, there was no reason for me to not tear up my real room at all, right? I should have just done it for the lols, okay? There's, <laughs> it should have happened, because I don't think this have a, they have a power, but like, Assault Vested, it's not stab, and it's like your weakest move. So, realistically speaking, there was nothing preventing me from going for the Terra Fire. But that's just me. That's just me talking right now out of my ass <laughs> but anyways this was it was it was a good set all right that's a one two victory for your boy <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this video 
Okay, this is probably gonna be the only time I do something like this because for the most part, I don't think I'm ever gonna be participating in a trial like this again. I mean, maybe next year if I do this again and I'm still involved with all this BTC stuff, maybe I'll do something like this again. But for the most part, my BTC videos are gonna be on the longer end. <laughs> and I apologize for that. But they're large tournaments, or at least they're long enough to where it takes a long time to talk about everything. So I apologize for that, okay? Now, that's gonna be it for this video. The next VGC video will be a tournament I participated again in September. So a couple, I think a week after this tryout happened, um, I participated in that tournament. And I'm hoping that that video does well. Okay, I have a different plan for it than, or, and a different structure to what I've done in the past couple videos. So I hope you guys enjoy when I do that. <laughs> Fingers crossed, you know, you never know. Um, but outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. I have been your boy, Source Crossing, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between. Also, catch me later streaming here on the Crossing channel. Uh, a little later today, we'll be ranking all the Pokemon anime rivals, and I know you definitely want to hear my thoughts on that. <laughs>